This is just a quick video. Uh, I've been reading this Jesus, 40 Days with Jesus, uh, and I've been getting really blasted off of it. When I said glory, like I just got hit. I would uh, encourage you guys, man, just go check that out and uh, just get really blasted. Get your mind renewed. That's what it feels like rivers of living water just washing away the stresses of life. The anxieties of the future it takes away all the earthly freak out stuff and just replaces it with let's just focus on Jesus <laughs> that's what makes it so glorious that's why it's so persecuted too I get so many hate comments for anything that I post like from this I don't can't remember her name Sarah or something like that because all she does is point to Jesus <laughs> Religion says, oh, it's new age to, to only talk about Jesus and, you know, whatever. Who cares what the dead say? We're here to listen to the living. And you know how you know that the living are speaking is because the life of Christ Jesus pours through those people. It's easy. It's, it's the ABCs of discernment. You know, Jesus would always say, my, my words are spirit and they are life. No spirit, no life, it's not Jesus speaking. <laughs> so I that's 100% confirmation that what I've been reading these uh, past week, I've been going on a binge of just Jesus calling, devotionals, and, and uh, it's really good for the spirit, man. It's really good for the soul, actually. It just renews you in the spirit of your mind. And... Uh, and I've been fighting a cold. Like I've been reading this, and my voice is boomy. I sound like that guy from uh, the Daily Audio Bible, like with Brian Harden or whatever his name is. I used to listen to that guy back in like 2010 or whatever. <clears throat> and uh, I've been just enjoying myself, uh, doing a lot of rearranging of things in my life. There's a, uh, I'm uploading a bunch of Chinese lessons uh, because that's I don't know. There's something about China. I don't know what it is, man, but I keep seeing CLO. And I'm like, God, what is this CLO thing? And I've never heard anything from God on it. It's like, is, there, is am I just going crazy? You know, because I, I remember I see 333, that's call upon God, and I'll show you things that you do not know. I see 555 everywhere, that's grace. You know, 444 is Jeremiah, 44 verse 4, the glory coming up through the temple, you know. You know, 666, a lot of people say it's the fallen nature, like the beast nature. It could be one or two things. It could be the fallen nature or it could be the wealth transfer of Solomon. Remember, he received 666 talents of gold. So, you know, the wealth of the ungodly is laid up for the just or something like that. So let's get on the just side, <laughs> the righteous side in Christ. And uh, I think true riches, though, it's not even, it doesn't even have to do with money. True riches is just having the seven spirits of God blazing through your heart, blazing through your mind. It's having Christ fully formed in you. The true riches, His reward is with Him because His reward is Him and it's in Him. It's being in Him and having Him come through you as one in union with the living God. <laughs> you've never felt alive until you've been possessed by the living God. When you wake up in the middle of the night and you can just... You're just in this realm of ecstasy of his love just pouring through you. You can feel him in the night season. And then when you wake up in the morning, wow, he's still there. <laughs> he's not really even hiding, you know, because you seek in him and you found him. Why would he be hiding when you found him? <sighs> and then he kind of just lifts. You notice that? I mean, am I, am I the only one? It's like I'll be in this these glory ecstasies for days. And then slowly the presence lifts off. It feels lighter and lighter. I'm not, I'm not doing anything different. I'm not going into sin. I'm, I'm not like everything's remaining the same. I'm just like I'm walking with God throughout the day. But it feels like the presence of God is kind of like it's getting more shallow. Like God, did I did I forsake you? Did I you know? And then you just bring your heart and your mind back on Him, and there He is again. And then other times it's like you just. You're not about 24 seven in the manifest presence of God. And that's the goal is to set our affections on things above and lift them off the earth. And these Sarah Young, that's her name, Sarah Young devotionals. It's kind of like what my last 10 years of videos have been all about anyway. 
let's just get it. let's just get blasted on Jesus. Oh yeah, that's another series things that I'm doing is uh, blasted on the Bible. I haven't been uploading every day on those because uh, I lost like my voice is kind of going crazy. This virus jumped on me. What happened to my beautiful background music? Hold on a second here. I was enjoying that. Ah, oh, there we go. Soothing. <clears throat> but I really, I am really going to jump back into that. I'm really enjoying that too. There's nothing like the Word of God when it just explodes. You know when you get a like a nugget? It's like you know God is talking to you. And that's what I'm, you know, gathering from that. I just want to, I just read like three chapters. I'm starting with the book of Isaiah. And then it's, if something jumps out to me, I'll just pray that at the end of the, at the end of the thing. It's not just a read the Bible thing. It's like, I just want to engage into the word because the word of God is a door and you can go through the word of God and enter into paradise to meet with the father. Literally happened to me. <laughs> I was reading, I was in a Bible study years ago, I, I, this video, I always talk about this testimony because it just, man, it's just so full of life and it's where it's, it's a mark in my life where I got changed through an encounter with the living God. I don't know why I'm holding that. And uh, I was reading the Bible and, and then uh, it exploded, like ugh, God is talking to me, you know, you know, whoever overcomes will uh, sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame it and sat down with my father in his throne. I knew God was talking to me. I just didn't know what was going to happen until the following week when I actually sat in his throne and God rebuked me in heaven for having conditional love. But he was rebuking me in unconditional love. I learned so much from that day. I learned that love, like human love, is actually fear wearing, wearing unconditional love's lipstick. It's shallow. I'll love you if God doesn't do that. He loves con unconditionally no matter what, because that's who he is. And he doesn't change his nature to become like a human. <laughs> we change from glory to glory to become like his nature, the, the way we were created in the very beginning. Another thing I learned from that is like, you can't, you don't even have the ability to love unconditionally until you've experienced the unconditional love of God. Because that, that tree of life experience is like what brings forth the fruits of that unconditional love. That's one of the fruits on the tree. <laughs> and uh, the knowledge of good and evil, it'll never bring forth unconditional love. It'll only bring forth human love, which is basically in a fallen state. And, uh, and another thing I learned from that is, because I used to get rebuked constantly by Pharisees, religious people who just have these opinions and pride and think they can do everything better. And, and every time I would get rebuked by a Pharisee, like they'll be quoting scriptures and it'll just be so full of death. It's like Satan quoting scriptures all over again to Jesus in the wilderness. And I learned right there and there that when God convicts, Satan condemns. God convicts in righteousness. God convicts in unconditional love. His presence was there when he was rebuking me. The rebuke was he didn't he didn't share, he didn't look at me. He was busy looking at the person that I had conditional love towards. And it felt so good. But I, I felt like I was so in awe at how much he loved those who I didn't, but I said I did. Yeah, we need to have the encounters with the living God. <laughs> Jesus would say, I only say what I hear my father saying. I only do what I see my father doing because he walked 100% perfectly in union with his father, demonstrating the way we are to walk as believers, born again, born from above, so that we can walk in things above and release them to th upon things below, you know, breaking shackles, breaking bondage, breaking mindsets, breaking disease off people, breaking anything, anything that the devil has set up to destroy humanity with. The only way to break those things is not by study and manuals and, you know, <laughs> it's actually by walking in heavenly places in Christ and the anointing is what breaks the yoke. And the anointing comes through a surrendered heart and mind. 
And of course you use your mind to, uh, you, you sow seeds by f like, like I said, just anything that has the glory on it, anything that has the anointing on it, spend your time focused, like just devouring that stuff. For a long season, it was the, it was the passion translation scriptures. I would just open it up and read it out loud and the heavens would open. It didn't matter where I was, what I was doing, what state I was in. I could have been so oppressed. I could have been like already in the presence of God. You know, I could have been grocery shopping and I'll just open up the scripture, start reading it out loud and boom, this peace realm would open up around me and through me. And it was like, man, there is so much anointing on this word. And you could tell from a lot of the comments that I used to get on uh, my YouTube channel for some of the older videos, heretics. One lady, she started a, a, an anti the passion translation group on, on Facebook, invited me in. I'm like, what is this? And I'm like, hey, what is this group about? Uh, you know, I said the passion translation. And, and then all these people was just thread after thread of how they, it's such a heretical book. It's demonic. It's, it's this, it's that. And they started criticizing Brother Brian. I was like, dude, man, this group is so nasty. Why are you guys, like, where's, uh, this is our brother, <laughs> you know? Why are you snapping at him like this? And then I'm like, I'm not into gossip. Sorry, this is the wrong group for me. I'm, I'm out of here. And I left, and then they came onto my wall and they started, <laughs> man, it just felt so disgusting. And so you can always tell the works of darkness. And then God taught me later on that, you know, to be the light of the world, you know, to expose darkness is not by writing gossip blogs. It's not by slandering. It's by shining the light of the Holy Spirit through the temples of the Holy Spirit that brings correction. People need an encounter with the living God instead of just encountering this dead religious system that we've been walking in for 2,000 years. Where did Moses get the book of Genesis from he encountered God your words should be like that too because that's in an old that's in a lesser older covenant his words were spirit and life because they came from God <clears throat> and how much more who are grafted into the olive tree the anointing tree of life we've been engrafted in and if we're part of this tree we our words should be spirit and life too and the only way that your words can be spirit and in life is by being one in union, perfect harmony with the living God. Hearing his voice. I even said to God, I like, I like to talk to him about the scriptures. And I'll bring the scriptures to him. It's like, God, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. I, you know, legally I have the right to hear your voice. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> oh man. And one other time I was just driving in my car, just oh hunger and desire is like a it's like an earwax cleaner. <laughs> it's like fire that just melts the wax out of your ears so you can hear God. Hunger and desire. I was driving in my car. I was going to pick up my daughter from school. This is when I had a car. <clears throat> and then um I was like, I just wanted to be, I just want to hear Jesus always. I always want to be in his presence. I just want to hear his voice, whether it's through Netflix, through a video game, walking down the street, through a Bible, through a child, through a conversation, through anything, through nature. I need to hear his voice. And so I'm like, I need to die to myself today. How do I, how could I crucify more? I need more of you, Jesus. And as I was driving, I just, I remember in the Old Testament, they would take an all or a spike or something, and they would drive it through the servant's ear to the door. And then he would become his masters for the rest of his life. He wouldn't be, he wouldn't be able to go free. He would belong to that, to like he'd be a slave to his master or something like that in the Old Testament. And I'm like, God, I just take that nail on the cross. I am crucified with the Christ. I just nail my ear to the door. Pff, I am yours. And as soon as I did that in my car, as a little prophetic act, demonstrating outwardly what's going on inwardly in my heart. The anointing oil just started oozing through my, my flesh. I could feel the anointing coming out through me, not, not the glory. That's different. The glory is like a realm. It's a dimension of the presence of God where whew, well, I love the glory. It is God. But this was the anointing oil. 
It was like just coming through my my body. Not physically where I could see it. I don't know, I didn't look, but I could feel it coming through my, my pores, my, my face, my feet, my hands, my arms. Oh, I can feel it now. <laughs> I can feel the anointing pouring through the body of Christ. Because that's part of the body that I am. <laughs> and he didn't just do that for me. It's like when we truly, totally are crucified with Christ, the anointing of Christ Jesus will pour through his body, healing, breaking the yoke of bondage. Breaking the yokes of slavery, breaking mindsets, breaking sickness, breaking disease, breaking anything that the enemy would try to bind the body of Christ with. The anointing breaks the yoke. And that's what happened when I decided to die to myself. I only want to hear Him. Let my words only be your words, God. Let my thoughts only be your thoughts, God. Let my being just be filled with your being. As you live, move, and have your being through me, let me live, move, and have my being through you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Nothing to do with anything below, but to pour out what you've given me above, below. <laughs> to make it on earth as it is in heaven. And uh, that is something that we really need to do daily. Die daily. If there's still you, then there's, some, that's, there's an offering there for the Lord. <laughs> So then we can say with Brother Paul, it's no longer me that lives, but Christ living through me. In the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. He loved me and gave himself for me. <laughs> so that when we're totally dead to ourselves, we can love others unconditionally because it's Christ's love pouring through us. And build them up. Pull them up. Pull them up higher into dimensions of the realms that you walk in. You can, you can bring others into those dimensions if they believe your words. And even if they don't believe your words, they might still get hit by the anointing and get triggered and start manifesting demons on you or they'll run away from you. I used to grab my guitar years ago and just go sit in the parks and just fist fights be breaking out. And I'd be like, just worshiping God with my eyes closed, not even worrying about if I get punched in the face, they have these needles full of AIDS. I was just so gone that I didn't really, if I die, I die. I mean, it's time to worship God, you know? We need to be more God-focused than flesh-focused. That's part of Colossians chapter 3. Because <clears throat> for more to crucified, you can't kill me. <laughs> One guy came up to me. He's like, I was, we were singing there, and this guy came up to us. He was like all spaced out. And I was with my friend, and he came up to us, and he's like, we're going to put you on that totem pole. It's just one guy. We're gonna put you on that totem pole. And there's a totem pole over there in the park. And I like I looked at him, I'm like, this is a devil. I said, it's or it's too you're too late. I'm already crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. <laughs> you're looking at a dead living man. <laughs> and then the guy just he snapped out of it. He's like, what am I doing talking to these guys? And he walked away. <laughs> walked away. Oh my gosh, that was. Some of the experiences we'd have just standing on the streets, we'd walk down the streets praying in tongues, pulling people out of wheelchairs. They didn't get healed all the time. Rarely did they get healed because we had a lot of zeal, but not a lot of wisdom. And uh, we're still learning. It's all about that, just getting crucified with Christ and letting him live. It's like, but that's the desire of the heart that opens it up wider for him to pour through, for him to manifest himself to you. Remember, I will love those, those who love me, I will, I will open the door and suck with them and manifest myself to them or something like that in Revelation. It's like the love gate, when you're so in love with Jesus, of course, he can't resist but to meet with you and to feast with you. He gives you a feast of his words as you drink his words and he just eats your words. You're made in his image as a living epistle. So what he longs to hear your words of devotion and adoration and he pours his love into you. It's like this perfect circle of love. You were born again to be with him in heavenly places. <laughs> you know, the greatest the thing that we could do for God is just love him. It's the first command. Why? Because when you love God, his love can flow through that love gate in your heart and love others. He'll make he'll set you up to like to heal the brokenhearted when your heart is just fully surrendered to his love. Like he will 
He will hug people through you. He will speak to people through you. He will touch people through your heart, through your mind, through your, even sometimes you don't even have to say anything. You could just be standing there. It's just because you've been in his presence, other people will come into his presence that's in your presence because you're in his presence. So one time I was just walking through the dollar store, like just totally in the flesh, not really even thinking about God. And this woman walked by me, boom, never met her before in my life. Never seen her before that or after, but she carried somebody who I recognized. I knew that she was a Christian by Christ, not by her words, but by Christ. No longer judge we any man after the flesh. You know, <laughs> we judge everything according to the spirit. We discern everything according to the spirit because you are a spirit. Whoever is born again of the spirit is spirit. So you learn, you learn to live in those spiritual abilities, which is one is discernment. You know, <clears throat> and uh, once you can discern all the, if you can discern God, the presence of God, the love of God, the word of God, of course, you're going to have discernment to know when a devil is speaking to you because it will have death on it. It will have that. Yeah. <laughs> One time I was going to take a whiz, man. I'm a brand new believer, just a brand new Christian. And uh, I went to this. I don't even know who his name was, man. He was in a stadium, and I don't even know how I got there. But it was an outdoor, like a football field, and uh, there wasn't too many people in this in this thing. Holy Spirit, shaka! <laughs> and I show up, and I don't even know anything from anything. I just probably I'm a brand new believer. I probably read like the first couple books in the Bible. Brand new believer, probably like three months old in the Lord. I don't know. It was very wrong, very young, very raw, and. Uh, and I go to the stadium and I sit down and uh, this guy comes up to me. I can't remember if I was sitting down. No, I was going to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom and this guy's standing there and he's like, you're going to hell. I know who you are. <laughs> and his words like, Ugh, just, it, it felt, not that I've ever felt this, but hot pee, like urine. Just like this, this hot oozing piss came out of like an atmosphere of ugh. This guy just vomited this hot urine on me with his words. And I'm like, I, I look at him, it's like, dude, I'm going to the bathroom, man. You know, you may consider it hell, you know, I don't know if it's dirty in there. I, I'm still in the natural mind, I have no idea. I don't know anything about anything. And I go to the bathroom and I'm like, ooh. I was a devil. I was a devil. So this time I had tongues. Maybe it was six months old in the Lord. I don't know. I can't remember. But I was like, that was a devil. How do you cast out devils? I didn't really know enough of the Bible to know how to cast out a devil. It's like, well, I'll just pray in tongues. That's spiritual. You cast them out by the Spirit of God. <laughs> you know, basic wisdom. I used the tools that I had. And so I'm like, I got to go cast the devil out of this guy. Because that's what Jesus would do. He used to cast out devils. And so, finished doing my stuff, wash my hands, I'm like, ready for the devil. And so I, I come out, I, I'm looking for the guy in the stadium, and I see him sitting down. And I said, hey, I know who you are. He's like, I know who you are, I know who you are. And he went running away. And I was chasing him around the stadium because I wanted the devil to come out so he could be free. So I was chasing this guy, Running around a stadium, yelling in tongues at him. <laughs> I didn't know any better. No one discipled me. I didn't even have like YouTube at this time. I didn't have anyone disciple me except for this one little pastor. It was in a Chinese uh, English congregation church up the hill from my house. Who was? It was very a shaky church, you know. And I had these guys discipling me, and and then uh, finally one day he took me to another church called uh, Glad Tidings and I guess he was showing me like Chris there's way more like you want to get into some deeper realms of God you probably need to get discipled a little better than we can disciple you <laughs> so he took me the pastor of the church took me to, and just introduced me to other uh, ministries and stuff like that that is a cool selfless pastor man may his rewards be increased in Jesus name 
great livers of living water. Right now, wherever he is, God, just blast him. And so I was, oh, he took me to this uh, church and this guy, Tommy Tenney, was preaching. And then Tommy Tenney, he looked like a little Catholic. He had this suit, suit on, but no tie. It had like this little square thing. He looked like actually like a Catholic because I grew up as a Catholic. I'm like, oh no, what, what, have I, what is this guy getting me into? You know, I remember the Catholic religion, like don't you know, bow down to statues, the Bible says. And they were making us bow down to statues. Don't make repetitious prayers, Jesus said. And here we are with this rosary making all these repetitious prayers that mean nothing from the hearts. It's just repetition. And then so this guy Tommy Tenney, there, he's there. I thought he was a Catholic. Boy, was I wrong. There's no such thing as Catholic, Baptist, Pentecostal, non-denominational in heaven. Only the sons of God are there and the angels and the cherubim, the seraphim and all the... Everyone who's been born again of the Spirit. Everyone who's went through Jesus Christ. Your denomination doesn't go to heaven. Just you do. <laughs> God doesn't have denominations in heaven. God has his children. So you can just remove that man-made name tag right now and just like enter the kingdom through Jesus Christ. You don't enter through a Catholic <laughs> or a Baptist or a Pentecostal or a Jehovah's Witness. You can't have these are just man-made borders so that we believe the same thing in the flesh. But we haven't been taught by the Spirit. <laughs> so we gotta have all these fleshly borders, you know. Uh, hallelujah. So he's got this this smoke thing, Tommy Tenney, and it's going back and forth. And like, man, you can do that. We're allowed to do that in church. You know what? He's smoking, man. He's not smoking like this. He's He's got this incense, he said. He's like, when the high priest would go into the, the Holy of Holies through the veil once a year or whatever, uh, they would have to have this smoke going because if there wasn't enough smoke, he would drop dead. If the sacrifice wasn't perfect enough, he would drop dead. So he would tie a rope around his ankles with a bell. So that if the bell stopped ringing, they knew he was dead and they could drag him out. If the sacrifice wasn't perfect, he would be dropped dead. Had to be perfect. There was only one who was perfect who could bring that sacrifice. And it was, you know, they would do this thing yearly. And the high priest would go in there. And as he's talking about this thing, I can hear people around me, like behind, like in front of me. I can see them crying, and the atmosphere started shifting in the place. And he says, he said this statement that I love so much. He's like, you know what? I am sick of church. I grew up in church. I grew. I remember when I was a little boy. I would watch the old ladies in their high heels as I'm laying underneath the pew. I'd see them tapping their high heels. I grew up in church. I'm a fourth generation Christian. My father was a pastor, my grandpa was a pastor, my great grandpa was a pastor. I know what it is to be in church. I grew up in church. You know what, I'm sick of church. I want him. And hunger would go through the room. It's like, I just want him. He's all that I want. So if you don't want him, there's the door, get out. Because I'm sick of church. I'm sick of man's programs. I just want the living God. Nobody moved. The atmosphere was set. Holy Spirit was brooding through the place, through this one man, convicting us. And they were crying. And I looked at the pastor. He wasn't crying. I was like, what is going on? I didn't know we're supposed to cry in church. I thought it was supposed to be boring or supposed to be happy at least. No, I've always been bored when I'm in church, but okay. People behind me started crying. I look at the pastor again. He's not crying. I could feel the presence getting stronger. It's like the weather has shifted. It's like you go from just a bright sunny day to the clouds have come and the rain starts pouring down and there's a couple thor like rumbles of thunder. The atmosphere has shifted. It's not the same as it was. And all of a sudden, I'm in the realm. I can feel Holy Spirit so strong. The love of God pulsating through my heart and around my being. I could just feel this unconditional love that I have not felt since I was a little boy. When I was 10 years old. And God spoke to me audibly. He said, God is inside of that man. And the pastor came up to me and fire went through my entire being when he laid his hand on me. 
That was the first time I ever heard God. And, and the anointing went from like maybe a five to like overdrive when that fire went through me. And I recognized that presence as a little boy. His name is Holy Spirit. Oh. And I saw myself going to these meetings, these church meetings, and I saw myself looking at the girls, lusting after them. I'm saying in my heart, God, which one's going to be my wife so I can have sex with her? That was my motive for going to these meetings because it, I couldn't have sex outside of marriage, so I go find a Christian girl so I can have sex with her. That was full of lust and idolatry. And then uh, Holy Spirit spoke to me without words. He's like, Chris, these are your motives for going to church. And it's blocking you from this. Waves of his unconditional love just made me weep and bawl my eyes out. I felt so ashamed yet so loved. Ashamed of my fallen nature. Ashamed of because I was not going there to seek him. I was going there to seek gratification of my flesh. And I was like, God, forgive me. Forgive me for going to these meetings, these church services to look for flesh when I should have been looking for your spirit. It's like, and then another wave of his presence would come. That's what comes when you seek me. And then I just, I was broke. I knew why other people were crying. They were being convicted by the Holy Spirit for their sins. They were being convicted. Why? They were being rebuked in unconditional love. Why? So they can go deeper with God. So they can be refined and fired. Yet so as seven times to the perfection that God wants us to walk in. In holiness. Holiness isn't what you do. It's being with Him and letting Him pour through. And I just wept. I was like, oh my gosh, you are the purpose of life. You are the, the focus Everything that I do now, from now on, I have to seek your face. I have to seek this presence. When I go to these meetings, it's to worship God. When I, when I, when I, when I read the scriptures, it's to seek you, it's to find you, it's to learn more about you, so that you can teach me, God. And I was changed. I was marked that day as a young believer. And I learned that day that when God rebukes, He rebukes in unconditional love. His spirit is there. Not like a Pharisee who will condemn you with the scriptures. God is love. So when he speaks, his voice is love. His voice is atmosphere. His voice is the brooding presence of peace and love. That's how you can know when Jesus would say, my, my, my words are spirit and truth. It's like his spirit is love. The fruit of the spirit is love, peace. Prince of Peace, you'll know who's speaking by the amount of peace on those words. You'll know who's speaking by the amount of peace or lack of peace. You'll know who's speaking by the amount of demon <laughs> or nothing or peace. So it's so easy. This is the ABCs of the gospel of in discernment of spirits. No peace, not God. He's the Prince of Peace. How do you know though? What if, what if God really is speaking and you don't sense anything? Well, then just put that word on a shelf. Say, God, if that's you, grant it. If it's not you, burn it up. Only words from my Father. Let those be built and planted in this temple of the Holy Ghost. Every other word be burnt up now in Jesus' name. I will not accept any other word but what you have spoken. I will not enter. I, don't, I can't afford to entertain the words of the dead because I'm not into death. I've already been crucified with Christ so that I can walk in his life. And that is your inheritance too. Your calling is not what you do. Your calling is going to him and letting him pour through. <laughs> Matthew chapter 10. Your calling? And Jesus called his disciples unto him. Seven is the number of perfection. Those seven words is your calling. It's your perfect calling. And Jesus called his disciples, called him. And Jesus called his disciples unto him. Then he gave them power to cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, you know, cleanse the lepers, 
Because the power came from intimacy by going to him to receive the power and then he goes pours through you because he is the power. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope this encouraged you to some level <laughs> to just let's set our affections on Jesus. Let's walk with Jesus. Let's get renewed in the spirit of our mind by setting our mind upon the spirit. <laughs> and you'll and you know God likes to play, you know, peekaboo. <laughs> peekaboo, I see you. You know, you'll seek him during the day. You might not even like you might not even really find him. Like in the substance, but then you wake up in the middle of the night and you catch someone watching you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Speaking out of experience, one time I was worshiping. Last, last story. I went to this worship invasion where there's, <laughs> this group's awesome, man. All they do is worship God for like hours. And then maybe if the Holy Spirit leads, they'll give like a 20 minute sermon or something like that. If the, if the Holy Spirit leads, usually they would just worship and we just, you know, give glory to God. And I, I, I ended up on my face so many times with snot and everything just pouring out of my... That, that's when you know it's God. We used to measure the anointing by how much rivers would come out of my nose. Hallelujah. <laughs> it was an outward manifestation of an inward <laughs> transformation. Anyways, I worship with everything I was dancing I was clapping I was shouting I didn't feel anything and I was really discouraged I was I gave I worshiped God with everything in my heart I was like why where why is God not responding you know usually he would respond and I get I get whacked and I just like I can just feel the freedom increasing but you remember that scripture that says we will give him a sacrifice of praise a sacrifice is something that costs you something that you don't expect anything to like it's a sacrifice so I learned something that day it's like sometimes that I worship God so I can feel him of course I always do that anyway I, I love to feel his presence I love to hear his voice I love God but sometimes it's like how about you just worship God because he's amazing how about we just worship God because he is the ultimate, he's given me so much. And I'm just thankful. Even if I don't sense God right now, even if I don't feel it, I'm just gonna step out in faith and trust that God's gonna accept this because it's from the depths of my heart. And that's what I did that day. And uh, But I kind of expected him to show up and I was a little bit frustrated. Actually, I was really frustrated. God, I drove hours to get here and I gotta drive hours to get home. And I spent hours worshiping you. What's going on? Did I sin? Did I do something wrong? And it was nothing like that. It's just like God likes to play peekaboo. I see you. <laughs> so as I'm driving, I get into my car and I start driving home, just really frustrated. Boom! The presence of God lands on me, strikes me in my car. Tears. It's like, I, I felt nothing in the meeting. But when I got in my car and drove home, wow. I drove home in an open heaven. It was like you sow seeds, you throw your bread upon the water or whatever, you throw your cast your seed upon the water, and it just comes back. You sow to the spirit, you reap the spirit. You sow your heart to God, of course you're gonna reap God's heart. He loves us unconditionally. I manifest myself to those who love me. Isn't that what Jesus said in Revelation? I make myself known to them and we'll sup with them, something like that. Anyways, this video is going on a little bit long. I just wanted to share a quick update of what's going on. We're doing the Jesus Calling every day and uh, the Walking with Jesus for 40 days. And uh, the Isaiah, going through the book of Isaiah, is just like a devotional where I could just read the Word of God and you know get fed and just you know, talk to God about it afterwards. And uh, I'm uploading a bunch of Chinese lessons because uh, I love something about... There's something about Chinese, CLO, Chinese Learn Online. Chinese Learn Online, CLO. I asked God about it, I Googled, I couldn't figure anything out, so I'm just going with that. Because when I learn Chinese, I get blasted. <laughs> There's an anointing on it for me, I don't know. I'm, 
So I'm enjoying it. I don't, not so much on the French and uh, the Spanish is absolutely terrible. I can't even, like, hola. <laughs> Hablo espanol? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, okay, that's it for today. May you be blissed with the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ in your belly. Work out your salvation and form an atmosphere of glory. Hallelujah. <laughs>